Hello there everyone, Ash and Flash here and welcome on into a early LEGO Marvel Summer 2024 set review. Today we're looking at set number 76286, the Milano Spaceship. This set is going to be retailing for $179.99 USD or $239.99 Canadian. It is an Infinity Saga set. It is actually the 10 year anniversary of the first Guardians of the Galaxy film. So this is a perfect set to be releasing this summer. Figure-wise, you can see there's only five characters here included. This is a massive box. You can see up here at the top, just this is some of the most detailed uh, I think I've ever seen in highest quality because of the size. The comic panels up here at the top, it, it looks gorgeous, all the different characters. We've got Gamora over here on the top. And then spinning it around here on the side too. You can see the Marvel logo there. It just looks incredible at this size. And then over here on the back, you can see that there are a bunch of different play features showing off some of the interior and different things like that. It's also got the new style of boxes here from Europe that uh, I did a video talking about. There's a short if you want to check out that on the channel. But let's go ahead. Let's take a closer look at this set. So here it is built, and I'm really surprised, I think, just by the shape of this and how intricate of a build this actually is. You'll see as we go through and look at some of the pieces that they've used for the wings, just there's so many new pieces that exist here in 2024 that just allow you to make such incredible shapes. And even instead of having stickers in different sections, like you've now got all of these tiles that can now interweave and lock in with each other to create just such a cool pattern around this whole thing. I am blown away by this model. You can see there's just so much going on here, even in the back. It looks amazing. But one of the main things that uh, I think it was actually the the new Guardian ship that first started in, what was it, with the Infinity Saga, they introduced this stand, which is really cool. I think that this is something that regular Star Wars ships need because it just looks so cool on this stand. It's super easy to just lift the ship up off of the stand and then you could see which way that's facing and you just gotta line it up and you're good to go and place it back on the stand if you wanted to you should also be able to actually flip it around and you could see that it's now sort of flying straight almost because the stand is on a little bit of an angle so instead of it pointing downwards you can see here that it is actually on a bit of an angle and again very easy to remove you can see it a little better here the, the angle and just the stand. I like that they added a little bit of blue, I guess, to indicate where, I, I'm not sure. Maybe it just helps you see better that there's some color there instead of black when you're working underneath trying to attach it. But yeah, the stand, it, it's a pretty solid build here. You can see it's obviously sturdy enough to hold up the ship. And of course, if you wanted to, you could just have the ship lying down on its own without a stand. That is also an option that you have here too. And I just want to start up here in the front. I love the shaping. I think they've always done such a good job of getting these angles right. But look at like the newer tiles that just didn't exist back then that allow you to really meet at this one point here in the front. Even underneath, look how detailed this is with all of the tiling here. Again, this blue stripe going down these curved pieces and different things that's that angled piece didn't exist i love this it's just barely noticeable but the shaping of this is just a little bit off there like it's not all angled the same way to give it a little bit of bulk that looks so cool and then of course underneath here a little bit of messiness there but i guess you're not going to see that too much but there is this sticker i'm just going to remove this piece just to show you it looks pretty cool this three by three tile with this sticker and underneath there is uh, this wing here that can actually move and bend a little bit there. You're also able to, if you want to, you could rotate this around and angle it different ways. I love these pieces there. I think that looks so good. Just that whole shaping, the roundness of it is amazing. Looking at it from the side, it is a little noticeable and you do see some interior that I don't think you're really meant to be able to see. In case you were curious, yes, it's the exact same over here on this side and it's just completely reflected. The only difference here being that there is no uh, round dark red dish here with the uh, sticker that was on that plate. But same over here, same wing and everything that you can bend and rotate around. 
And this is my favorite part. I, I did say this up at the top, but just how it's all connected and everything. You can see that it's not flat either. There's a little bit of a bend right here that happens. I don't know if the camera's really picking up on that there. You could see. Um, but that just looks amazing. Again, these pieces did not exist back then. All of this to come together and line up just so well. It looks amazing. You do have this plate there with a sticker on it as well up on the front for a little bit of detailing. But just this is, it's remarkable. It really is. Over here on this side, you do have a Milano sticker there on this 2x6 plate, which obviously could have been a print, but it, that's okay. I, I don't mind stickers. I'm not one to really get upset about that. There's not many in the set at all. One of the coolest things, and we'll look at the interior in a bit, is actually this piece here. I'm going to go ahead and detach it. This is a brand new cockpit piece that they created for the set. And one of the best things about this is the fact that it's actually in a separate bag. Fully protected. This thing is not getting scratched up like a ton of other front cockpits for different ships and things. So the fact that LEGO is taking that extra step to protect this is really cool. Now, it is in paper. So I'm not sure if North America is going to get that. We'll have to see next week. But for now, uh, this is from Europe, obviously. So that's how I have that in a paper bag and the rest of the pieces. I, I truly cannot stop praising enough. Like, look at this section here. I'm going to remove it from the stand just so I can angle this a little better here. Just how that curves back onto that that side part there and see from the front you can't even see how it's on this angle it looks amazing back here even this bit how the orange connects there maybe that gap could have been a little closer together having less of that but still looks amazing even the wings here on the sides you can move this up and down you've got a little bit of yellow there but again the use of these new plates that didn't exist back then also love that there's not really you know, sometimes with other Guardian ships, I feel like a lot of the times you can really angle them and move them different ways when really they're only supposed to maybe go up and down. So I like how this is really locked into place there. And coming around here to the back, I love the shaping of this here. Like the little details here and there look really great. And uh, these wings can also move just a little bit. You can see that they can move from left to right and it actually slides right inside there. So I love that that works that way. This large wing here is obviously uh, locked in place with the rest of the ship. This is some cool detailing here too as well. I love just the Nexonite shield pieces and those triangular sh pieces to create the shape. And you can see over here on the other side, it's pretty much the exact same thing. I don't think that there are any differences here on the side. I love the back with all the exhausts here and you can move them and angle them around depending on which way you want the ship to fly. So I think that is really cool just how they've even got the transparent uh, orange pieces on top of like the dark yellow to create, let me just show you, to create that sort of effect, making it a little darker. And all of the transparent light blue rings around that too looks pretty cool. You've got a little bit of an exhaust here as well. And then you've got, I guess those are guns in the back and the little windscreen there. And then also you could see that there is another exhaust there in the back. Now this whole side looks great. Just again, all of the different slopes and everything, it just covers it up so, so well. It's the exact same, obviously, over here on this side too. It is just remarkable. Up here at the top, it looks great here. Again, the different angles, you could see just some of the detailing there, like shovel pieces, bucket handles, this shield up here on the top, all to create this pattern and detailing looks great. I want to show you it from the front here. You could see, again, all of these slope pieces, how they link into each other. It looks amazing. Now, this is where the fun begins with the interior. Yes, there is a little bit of interior. Also, you can move that just a little bit. But uh, yeah, you are able to separate this and detach it, giving you access to the inside here. And there's quite a lot to go through and show you. All right, so this front cockpit here, there are three seats for you to place different guardians. You can even sit Rocket in any of the seats and you're able to place them all around. Now, I think that ever since Rivendell, to be honest, whenever we've gotten a figure that should be able to sit, I have been making educated wishes that I want the builds for the legs to be included so that, you know, in especially in display models like this, I would have loved for Rocket to actually look like he's sitting down. But uh, yeah, the inside, there's a, there's, there's a lot going on. You can see we've got this cool... Uh, sticker there on this slope piece 
that's pretty cool detail you've even got these little uh those are supposed to be like the zip line holders but you're actually able to angle them so that you can sort of pilot the ship different ways you've got a spot there as well for you to actually you know have a figure holding on to something you can see this seat is actually able to move and bend so you can actually collapse it down so that you can get access to the back here love this sort of classic it looks 80s postery but not sure if it's a specific reference to a lego theme or something let me know but you could see that there's the stud there that is for you to actually take little potted Groot and put him on the counter. Over here on the side wall, you can see that there is an incoming call from Yondu, and that's a pretty fun reference. I like that he's got the fin from the set that we first and only time we got him in, but it's not really accurate to volume one. I do like the slope there. That's a pretty cool detail and just how they've still fully interiorized, like even down below, look at that. It just makes it feel a little bit larger than it really is. All right, so I want to film this from above just to show you a couple things. You can see that there's a seat there for Drax. And you've also got so many different studs for you to be able to take any of the figures and just attach them around so that they can stand around. I really appreciate just that they were being mindful of that. And here's something really cool as well. Over here, they've got that little vent sticking out so that you could put Gamora's sword there like it's a sword rack. And then also those clips can store Drax's knives. You can also take Rocket's gun place it there on any of the studs but then specifically over here in the back there are two clips and what you do is you put star lord's guns or the blasters there and attach them like that there's not much going on here in the back besides there being this bed i guess that you could take peter and actually have him lying down and then on the wall there's also the cassette player with the cassette inside which is supposed to be one of the awesome mixes and that's pretty cool that's a printed piece not a sticker and here is the brand new star lord minifigure who looks amazing i love the new torso print looks great with the shirt underneath the legs are used for everyone else in the set that is uh, a regular minifigure height uh, the blasters, they're silver instead of the gunmetal gray like we got way back in the day. And the face, this is more, I would say, his look from like volume two, but it still works pretty well. It's the Chris Pratt face that they use in Guardians and then also for Jurassic. On the other side, he's got this upset expression, but this side is clearly a little misprinted there with the pupils. But the hair, I think, works really well for him. I will say, though, when it comes to Star-Lord, he definitely needed his helmet. That is something definitely missing in this set for sure, especially since this is supposed to sort of be an anniversary set in a way. Here is Gamora, who is awesome to get back here. I really love the new torso that they've designed for her. The hair, as always, looks great with the printing. But you can see she's got this smile on one side and then this fighting, angry expression on the other side. She does have her long katana included like she always does. And again, the legs are the exact same. But again, it's, it's so good to have her back here in a set. I don't think it's as exciting as getting Drax here, though, because this is probably the best he has ever looked. I love the tattoos on the arms. That looks incredible. Like, it's so important, I think, for this character to have that. It looks so darn cool. Love the torso printing there, too. You can see just how all the tattoos are going around all the muscles. The face as well, I think they really captured that smile. And on the other side there, you can see some back head printing and some incredibly detailed back torso printing there too again same legs and he does come with a pair of knives and i will always say this that they got the color wrong here he should be very very light green and here is rocket raccoon who looks so cool this is the exact same figure that we got in the january set with him and ronin from rocket's war bird but uh yeah really cool build for the gun there that he's got unfortunately mine's a little scuffed up on the nose but it still looks Pretty cool nonetheless especially that new torso and you could see the back torso printing there too in behind the tail piece that they have included for him here in reddish brown and included here for the first time in a long time is little baby Groot here in this is supposed to be potted Groot here because of obviously the pot but then you've got uh, you can see he's attached to these two reddish brown studs underneath and uh, just to show you this is the exact same piece that they introduced from volume two but it's back here with this just adorable printing there it looks great no back printing or anything there but there are two little handles for him to attach to the different figures so that they can hold him and look at him he's dancing there 
there you have it everyone that is my review of the milano spaceship this is an incredible set i love that this is releasing 10 years after the original film and those original sets this is the best milano we have ever gotten i don't think there's any question about that this is a near perfect set I just think that it could use a couple of things here and there. Obviously, those little gaps that I mentioned for the actual build, but it's it's from a certain specific angle. I don't even mind that. But when it comes to the figures, I think they leave a lot to be desired, as great as it is to get these characters in these outfits back here for the first time since then. I would have done things a little bit differently. I would have kept Rocket's outfit exclusive to the set from January and given him the orange outfit back. I think it would have been cool to maybe get Groot with the Avatar arms and legs. And Peter definitely needed his helmet. I also would have maybe thrown in here a couple of things. Maybe the collector. I think the orb needed to be back here. Yondu would have been really cool. But also, just throw Ronan in here. I, I I don't know. I don't think I would have been upset if he was here. Just there's there's a lot here that I just they could have done better with the figures for sure. But anyways. What do you think of this set, though? Are you going to be picking this up on August the 1st? Be sure to subscribe, turn the bell notification so you don't miss out on future LEGO Marvel set news and reviews. Hope you guys did enjoy the video. Hope you all have a great day. We'll see you all in the next one.